Hello Aries viewers, welcome to my channel. Let's see what, what's going on. This may or may not be your story. Um, it's just whatever the cards want to say. It could be about love, money. I was drawn to use the, the Dreamwalker Oracle deck that I made a couple years ago. Um, and this is usually about... Uh, this deck is usually about um, things going on in the astral realm, like behind the scenes. It could be with witchcraft, you know, with the psychic world. So there must be something going on because this deck really wanted to be used. So there's, you know, right off the bat what I'm getting for this group is that there's something really big, some kind of major transformation going on. Um, it could be with, with um, your zodiac chart. There could be some kind of shift that you're about to go through. You know, some of you might want to check out your, your charts right now. Um, some of you might be going through like your Saturn return. There could do, there's something going on here. I don't, I don't know. There's, it's probably different for everybody, but let's see what's going on. Let's see what's happening. Spirits of the living. So we have telepathic bond or telepathic communication, a deep psychic bond, feminine energy, communication. Okay. Someone might be telepathically trying to communicate with you or you're telepathically communicating with someone else for some of you this might be a woman is what i'm getting or it's someone that's in feminine energy this could also be a man that's now in a softer energy like maybe before in the past this man was kind of um you know maybe guarded distrusting overly logical kind of in more of like a macho energy and now they've taken on a more feminine energy like they're more um you know, more in touch with their feelings, more more vulnerable, more sensitive. They're going through a healing phase is kind of the energy I get. So, you know, take it as it resonates. It could be male or female. But with the communication card here, it's like we have someone, you know, I'm desperately trying to get through to you. Can you feel me when I think of you? So this could be somebody that is going through a psychic awakening. So this could be like an ex of yours or just somebody from your past that you had a connection with that... You know, maybe you're a witch or you're a psychic yourself or you're, you know, you believe in these kind of things. I mean, of course you do. You're watching this channel. So, of, of course, naturally you do. But I'm just getting the sense that maybe you told this person about that stuff. Like maybe about twin flames, spirituality, soulmates, gods and goddesses, angels, fae spirits, dragon spirits, um, you know, witchcraft, just any number of things. Just anything when it comes to like, you know, the spiritual world. Uh, the psychic world and I'm getting the sense that maybe this person wasn't fully open to it before like they might have been curious like they might have listened to you and been open-minded but I don't think they fully believed in it before but now I'm getting this person's actually researching like so say for example this is someone and you told them hey we're soulmates or we're twin flames or you know maybe you tried to hint at that and they weren't they didn't know what to make of it at the time just because they weren't familiar with those terms they're like what the hell is a twin flame I've never even heard that word before you know, this person probably is around a lot of people that don't um, believe the same way that, that you do. Because I'm just, I'm just getting someone that's like he or she is so different. Like I just get this person feeling like you're just so different than the per the people they're around. So even though they were intrigued by that energy, they might not have been familiar with it or used to it. You know, this could be someone that's like a witch too and they don't know other witches in their lives. So, you know, they were like intrigued. They were curious, but they... You know, you are already very advanced in what you know about is what I'm getting. Like, whether it's Twin Flames, Soulmates, whether it's Witchcraft, whether it's Psychic Work, Tarot, Ruins, you know, Spirituality, whatever it might be. Um, just something that's, like, unconventional, you know, something that's not very traditional. I'm just getting that this person was, like, intrigued by it and interested, but it's like you were, like, on a whole other level. So you're telling them all this stuff as if it's just common sense because, you know, a lot of people you know are into that stuff or they know about that stuff. But this person was like, what the hell do those terms mean? And they're trying to impress you and they're trying to keep up, but they can't. But what I'm getting here is that this person is now studying those things. So the things that you told them about in the past, like, they're more open-minded. I feel like some of them were, like, really, like, some of you are witches. This isn't for all of you. But some of you are witches, and I think that your person was, like, not super open to it before. Like, they were curious. They wanted to be open, but it kind of freaked them out. Like, they just were not used to... I'm just getting that they were not used to your energy. They were not used to you, even though they liked your energy. It wasn't something they had experienced before in their lives, you know. Um, for some, you might have been, like, the first real true love that they ever had, you know. Some of these people were very inexperienced. 
but I'm getting that they're they're researching. I just see someone researching, like they're researching witchcraft or twin flames or you know maybe tarot readings, um, that kind of thing. Like they're they're becoming more open minded, and they're in a much gentler energy than they were before. Is another strong message that's coming through here. So they're not so like. I feel like they were very rigid in the past, like very um, kind of like macho and set in their ways. Like they didn't, it's almost like you were kind of a shock to them. Like they, you know, they didn't know what to do with you almost. And and now it's like all the things that, that you told them about, they're, they're researching these things. They're open to these things. They might be going back through old messages because you might have told them things. And now they're like going back and looking at those messages and rereading them. Because, like, maybe you told them something that, like, maybe you picked up something that was going on with them, like spiritually, astrally. Or like you were just telling them about Twin Flames or something of that nature, you know. And at first they just kind of, they were curious and open, but maybe they were busy at the time that you told them. Or they just didn't really know what to make of it. So they're like, oh, maybe I'll come back to this later. But now I'm feeling like someone's actually scrolling through their messages and they're like, wait a minute. She told me, he or she told me this was going to happen. Or, or wait a minute, they explained this energy. Some of you told your person that they're going to go through a psychic awakening. And now it actually is happening. So that's for someone too. It's like some of you told them and they're like at the time they're like, yeah, sure I am. Of course. I'm sure. I'm sure eventually I will. You know, like they, they, they didn't take, they kind of brushed it off. They had other stuff going on, but now I'm getting that they're actually like, oh crap. Like, wait, I'm actually channeling things. I'm actually like having psychic dreams about my, my true love. I'm actually like, like communicating with spirits or, um, you know, seeing the synchronicities now, like I never knew synchronicities were real before. It's like someone's, someone's going through a psychic awakening. I feel like your person might have been, um, going through a dark night of the soul. And I feel like they're now transitioning from the dark night of the soul to their psychic awakening. So there's a lot of good energy coming in for your person. And like I said, they're also in a much gentler energy than they were before. Um, for some, you could be, you could, this isn't for everybody, but for some, you have a mermaid soul. So like you're connected to water, to the ocean, like ocean magic or your person is, um, this could also be a water sign or someone with strong water in their chart. What else do the cards want to say? Sorry, my camera it is just freaking out. Sometimes it does that, but I'll try to adjust it here. <laughs> just bear with me guys. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, and if this is your story and you want me to go more in depth into what your person's thinking, feeling, wanting, you know, what action they might take towards you, whatever you want to know, just send me an email. My email is below, um, in the description box below this video. It is dragonenchantress at awol.com. But like I said, you can just go to the description box right below this video and just copy and paste that email and um, go ahead and email me. Um... Let's see what else is going on here. And any, do any donations are appreciated too. My donation links are below. And if this resonates, you know, please like, share, comment, subscribe, interact. I really appreciate it. Complication of the empath. Your attention is required in the astral realm. Psychic chains and blocks need to be resolved and removed. The empath, Clara Sentience, you're picking up on my emotions. Remember to set firm boundaries when necessary. Hmm. Fairy realm could be a fairy spirit here too. There's natural seduction, beauty, charm, guidance and connection to nature, spirits, prophetic dreams. Yeah, like I said, someone's having prophetic dreams here. Someone's like, you know, it's not just a dream. Someone is actually like learning to astral travel even though they might not know what they're doing like this person your person or you might be going into trances or something and it's like you don't know what you're doing but you're you're you know someone here whether it's you or your person someone's going through a psychic awakening someone is you know starting to to have psychic dreams or maybe even a lucid dream maybe some of you are communicating with each other in your dreams you know there's just something here there's you know it wasn't just a dream stands out really strongly to me Yes, yeah, some are even, you know, communicating with, um, recognizing that they have, like, a grandmother, a grandpa, a spirit guide around them from the other side. And some are really, you know, some are communicating with you through music or you're communicating with them through music. There could be, like, an under overactive chakra or some kind of block chakra here. Yeah, someone needs to meditate. It's time to, like, get back. Yeah, it's time to get back into like passion, you know, courage, choosing love over fear, maybe doing some uncrossing work. Um, 
I almost feel like this is describing someone's path to getting their passion back. Like, when they go through the psychic awakening, they're also getting a lot of, oops, sorry. They're also reclaiming their empathetic side. But it's like, as an empath, you have to learn, and this could be you as well, it might not be them. But someone here needs to make sure that they set boundaries because it's like, as an empath, you have to keep those boundaries firm. Otherwise, you're going to lose yourself. You know, empaths tend to sometimes be drawn to narcissists and allow that energy into their lives. So it's like, as an empath, you have to have a balance. You have to be strong. You have to be firm in your boundaries and know what you deserve and not, you know, not allow all that energy into your life. You know, you've got to really find that balance. Otherwise, you know, kind of a lot of narcissists used to be empaths. A lot of empaths, you know, have not all, but but many of them have poor boundaries and they end up trying to save the world and, and putting themselves into this like beauty and the beast kind of mentality of, you know, I can fix him or her or I can save them or I can, you know, if I just love them enough, they'll they'll stop being abusive or they'll, or they'll change or this or that. And um, I feel like someone here is like going back and healing from that and like rethinking what they've been through in these kind of situations and like revising their empathy. Like they're changing the way that they, they're changing the way that their empathy allows them to interact with the world, if that makes sense. I don't know. That's probably a weird way to describe that, but it's like they're, they're, um, they're just, someone here is just doing some shadow work, some soul searching. So it's like, as an empath, it's like a lot of empaths do become narcissistic at a certain point because they lose themselves in, you know, these kind of situations where they don't set boundaries and they give everything and everything and everything. And then in the end, they're left broken. They're left empty. empty. There's just this void there. You know, it could also be what the chakra card was talking about too, that someone might have like a blocked root chakra or other chakras that need to be cleared because of situations like this. And, um... You know, some empaths turn into narcissists because they go through that because they don't set the boundaries. They just keep trying to save everybody and they keep putting themselves last. And then at some point they snap and they lose balance completely and they, they don't ever want to put anybody first again. They always just want to put themselves first from that point on. Like they don't want to, you know what I mean? Like they become jaded. They become exactly like the people that they were trying to save and trying to help. So as an empath, whether this is you or your person, it's like you have to really set those boundaries. You know, you can't, as hard as it is, you can't save the world, but you can leave your mark on the world. You can help certain people, but you have to accept that there are, you know, there are demons on earth in human bodies. There are succubus spirits here in human bodies that do not want help. They don't want to be saved. Some people are genuinely evil. Some people just find comfort in evil. Some people just feel that evil is their home, you know? I've literally met people that have told me that they want to go to hell because they resonate with that energy. It feels comforting to them. Like there really are demons here in human bodies. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I mean, actual demons, like, you know, like you kind of have to recognize that sometimes as an empath, um, that you can't really save people that don't want to be saved and that you should maybe use your energies towards yourself primarily, but also towards people that actually appreciate and value and want that energy in their life. You know, as an empath, you really got to find that balance. But yeah, someone's doing some soul searching, you know, someone's learning to set those boundaries again. Someone's like, I feel like maybe th this could be you or your person, but it's almost like someone that had a lot of empathy and then they kind of shut down over a period of time. And they stopped allowing their, their passion and they stopped being passionate. They stopped being emotional. They, they kind of just became jaded. They kind of just hated everybody for a while. And now this person is going through this psychic awakening. So they're revisiting their empathy. They're, they're looking at this energy again and they're like, wait a minute. Okay, I do need to be empathetic. This is part of who I am. I am a romantic. I am empathetic. I am emotional. I'm going to embrace those qualities, but this time I'm going to do it differently. I'm not going to give all of myself to people that don't want that energy. I'm not going to allow, allow psychic vampires and toxic people in my life. I'm going to, you know, have a good balance, temperance energy and reserve my empathy for the people that really appreciate and want it and the people that are giving back to me, you know, mutual energy exchange. You know, you got to fill your, comp your cup too. You can't just keep giving from an empty cup, you know. So this could be you learning this, but this could also be your person learning this, that maybe you saw that empathy in them and you kind of knew that they were a good person, but they had gotten out of touch with that side of themselves. Um, 
you know, because of all the things they had gone through, just because of, you know, how their life turned out. But now that they're going through the psychic awakening and they're realizing, you know, that their life has taken a drastic turn. Like I said, some of them were not familiar with Twin Flames or any of it. They just kind of had this very, um, I'm getting like some of them were like atheists or, you know, they just, they they kind of have like a logical, like more like a scientific mind. Like, oh, I'll believe it when I see it. I need proof of it. You know, like no faith really. But now they're, they're starting to have faith. And so they're like, okay, with this psychic awakening that's coming in for them, they're like, okay, well now their empathy is coming back too. You know, now they're starting to be empathetic again because they're, they're channeling, they're picking up on the energy of people around them. But this time around, they're just wanting to do it differently. They're wanting to not lose themselves this time. They're wanting to, um, you know, this could be someone that used to give a lot to people and they, you know, just did not have that balance. But now they're learning to have that balance. You are your person. Take it as it resonates. But let's look more into this energy, this complication and empath energy. Five of Cups. Strength. Yeah, having the strength to, someone's having the strength here to let go of the things that no longer serve them, let go of the toxic piece, sorry, let go of the toxic people, let go of the psychic vampires, you know, this energy also reminds me of someone that might be having a hard time cutting out like a mother or father figure that's toxic. And I just want to say, you know, do what's right for you. You don't owe anybody your energy. You don't owe anybody anything. This is your life, you know. Sometimes we are born into families that are not our original soul group. So a soul group is the people that you usually incarnate with, like your soul family, your, your soul tribe. You know, you find them each lifetime. You know, you've had several past lives with this group. This is like, this is your energy group. Or not, not energy group, but soul group. Um, but sometimes, you know, on rare occasions, and especially this lifetime I've noticed, especially for like fae souls, what I've noticed is that some of them are are born into um, families that serve a karmic purpose for themselves and for the family. And so they're not, some of them are separated from their soul groups this lifetime. So some of you are like, you know, you never felt that love with your parents. Like they didn't love you or you didn't love them. Like you just felt like a disconnect. Like some part of you is like, like, I know I have soul parents. I know I have past life parents that are it's not these people that are my biological parents this lifetime. And, you know, spirit is saying is what I'm feeling here is that spirit saying, you know, if someone's toxic, you can cut them out. It doesn't matter if they're a mother, a father, um, who a brother, sister, whoever. If someone is gaslighting you and abusing you, you have the right to stand up and cut them out and be done with them. You know, don't feel sorry for them. Don't don't get dragged back into that energy because it's totally possible that that toxic mother or father or whoever, that they're not actually your soul mother or father. You might have like someone from your past life that was usually your mother or father, but they just weren't this lifetime for some reason. But you will be reunited, reunited again after this lifetime. They will be your mother or father again in, this, in the next lifetime. They just happen to not be in this particular lifetime. I hope that makes sense. And some of you feel that energy. You're like, where's my soul group? Like you felt alone your whole life and it's you know, it's because of this. It's like, well, this this might not be your actual soul family. This, you know, you might have been into a, you know. So anyway, it's just saying like, you know, you can let go of the things that are no longer serving you. You can have the strength to let go of these things and start a new passionate beginning. Some of you need to release something. Like there's like an object, like a picture or like some kind of, um, like a stuffed animal or like a picture or a necklace or something that like someone that was really toxic gave you. Um, and like, you know, you need to like burn it or get rid of it and you're just having a hard time doing it because I'm just getting like an object. Like I see like a necklace for somebody. Um, I see like, I think it's like a black necklace is what I'm seeing. So it's just saying some of you need to do like uncrossing and like cut and clear work and that kind of thing. But, but yeah, overall, I just feel like. Like, someone's removing whatever's blocked them from their true psychic path, from their spiritual path. Someone has a new passionate beginning. This is like a new paradigm. It's like they've been, this person's been stagnant and they're coming out of that stagnation now. Yeah, this could be a king of, yeah, it could be a king, it could be like a power couple. It could be that you guys are mirroring each other and you're both coming out of this energy at the same time. One person here is the king of pentacles, someone that's, you know, becoming, um, 
mature, grounded, stable, loyal. And this other person is, is intuitive, psychic. Um, could be someone that's studying right now, that's reading or doing some kind of studying. And I'm just getting that both of you are kind of doing the shadow work at the same time. You know, you're both getting out of this stagnant energy. You're both in this mentality of, you know, I want to live my best life. I want to be passionate. I don't want to be dragged down by psychic vampires and people that don't appreciate my energy anymore. This one wanted to come out. Yeah, there could be some communication that is coming through or needs to come through. It could be some of you need to send a message to someone. Some of you need to stand up. Some of you like tried to let go of like a to toxic mother or father or someone like that is kind of what I'm getting. Like you tried to basically say like, hey, I think I'm going to move away or I think I'm going to do my own thing. And this person gaslit you into staying and into dealing with them like they guilt tripped you. And it's kind of saying that you need to be more harsh. You need to be more direct. You need to be like, no, I'm I'm leaving. This is what I'm doing. This is my life. It's not your life. I'm going to do what I want. Like, you need to take your power back. But I'm getting that this divine couple, this, this king of pentacles and high priestess, that they're mirroring each other in this sense that they're both kind of going through this psychic awakening right now. And they're both thinking about how, like, what kind of energy they bring into the world. And they're thinking about their relationships. And they're thinking about how to be an empath and how they're, you know, they're both thinking about how to be an empath and how to, um, to balance these different aspects of themselves in this world. So it seems like you guys are getting out of stagnant energy and it's like someone's, you know, reclaiming who they really are. Ace of Wands, it's like a new passionate start. Someone's having the strength to let go of the things that are, um, you know, the toxic family, toxic friends. It could be also just devil energy, like toxic ways of thinking, like toxic mentality, um, just old patterns, that kind of thing. You know, some of you are, are doing a lot of shadow work and you're thinking yourself, you're like, okay, I have like, you know, you're, you're acknowledging ways that you've been toxic. You know, for some of you, it's like you're acknowledging ways that, I don't want to say toxic, but it's like you're acknowledging your role in all of this. You know, it's like you're acknowledging um, how you might have been part of why your third eye was blocked or part of why this, this energy didn't come in, basically. You know, it's like some of you are kind of kind of thinking about that. Like maybe you have like a certain mentality and you're realizing that you need to shift your perspective, that you need to, it's like you're just kind of, you're doing some shadow work right now is what I'm feeling because you want to reclaim this passionate side of yourself, this free-spirited, passionate, emotional side of yourself. But you want to do it right this time and you want to have the, this balance. And, you know, this is going to require the strength to let go of things that are no longer serving you. Some of you are asking for this new start, but you're still letting the toxic mother or toxic father or toxic whoever control your life. You're still, you know what I mean? Like there's still certain energies that you're allowing into your life that you need to look at. And, you know, quite possibly release and cut out, even if it's hard at first, even if it is painful, you know, knowing it's for the best because, you know, this person or these people maybe just are gaslighting you and wanting to wanting to tie you down and wanting to control you. Yeah, you guys are moving forward, though. I feel like you're you're wrapping up. A, you've wrapped up a karmic cycle. There's just like. It's almost like a karmic cycle has been wrapped up with like, I, I keep getting like toxic parents. Like some of you like toxic parents or like someone toxic in your life that um, kind of holding you back is kind of what I'm feeling. This could even be like for some of you, this could be like a binding spell or something that you did on somebody years ago. And you need to undo that spell because even though you guys have moved on, it's like this spell, like the binding spells are powerful. You know, some of you like might have done something like that with like some kind of really heavy magic. And it's saying like, go back and release that. Um, but there's something here to be released, basically, you know, take it as it resonates. It's, it's, it's not going to be the same for everybody. For some, it's a toxic parent. For others, it's like an object, maybe an object connected to a binding spell. For others, it is um, just like devil energy, like just like a certain way of thinking and doing and um, being in the world, just like a certain mentality that you've possibly had. And it's kind of like you have to get out of procrastination, get out of stagnant energy and have the strength to, you know, make some really serious life changes that you know you need to make. Some of you know that you need to move to, to a new location. Some of you know that you need to you know, cut that toxic family member out. Some of you know that you need to leave this toxic job 
but you're comfortable. So this, this reading is all about stepping out of your comfort zone and doing what you need to do, doing what's going to make you happy. And I know that's not easy. I know sometimes it's like, you know, it's not always that simple, but it's just kind of saying that there's some serious life changes that need to be made here. And it could even just be one person. It could literally just be like your life is pretty good, but you still have this psychic vampire that's trying to hold on to you that you need to do a cut and clear ritual on and maybe, you know, even, even, you know, stand up to them and, and let them know, you know, enough is enough. Maybe be in this king or queen of swords energy, you know? Yeah, because I feel like this person was dishonest with you. I feel like this could be, you know, someone that, like, like, I just feel like there might have been someone that, like, you tried to leave and they basically said no or, like, they they tried to hold you back or guilt trip you or something is what I'm getting. And again, not for all of you. There's different, there's a couple, there's a few different stories here. So it's like the same energy group, but there's different stories. So like for some, for a lot of you, this is a person, but for some of you, this is your own way of thinking, your own way of interacting with the world. You know what I mean? But either way, um, you have a passionate new beginning here. You have, you know, two of wands, like, or ace of wands. You have all this energy that's talking about, you know, you're reclaiming your power. You're stepping into your power. You're stepping out of your comfort zone. Some of you have been thinking about doing something and you're like scared of it. You're like, well, maybe I'll stay at my nine to five job. But some of you are like, I want to travel the world and be a blogger. And it's like, do it. You know what I mean? It's like that kind of energy where it's like your spirit guides are saying you have to take a leap of faith here. You might have to let go of things that were comfortable to you. You might have to let go of people that you know, you knew, you know, are toxic, but it's like, you didn't want to let go of them, but you know that they're dragging you down you know that they're hurting you you know that they're keeping you from your full potential. You know, this could be a number of things that, like I said, this could be a job and it's like, you want to do something unconventional you want to, you know, travel the world or you just want to do something different than what everybody else is doing, you know, and it's kind of like, it's about stepping into your power as a leader, stepping into, um, you know, looking at the future, making the world your oyster, deciding what you really want here, you know, doing the shadow work, stepping, just stepping out of your comfort zone is coming through so strongly that it's like, if you want a different life, if you want this energy shift, you're going to have to make some serious changes. You're going to have to take action on your part. And that could mean some very serious heart to heart conversations that might end in closure. It might, it might mean you standing up to someone and being like, you know what, I'm moving on with my life. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be drained forever. You know, I'm not going to do this with you forever. For others, it's, it's, you know, burning an object that you've been holding on to. Um, and for others, it's, it's like, like I said, a mentality. It's just like a way of thinking. It's, it's, um, kind of doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And now your spirit guides are kind of saying like, well, it's time to go through this psychic awakening. It's time to let this new energy in. And it might not be comfortable. It might be completely terrifying and unfamiliar at first, but it is, um, it's time to have this new life that you've been trying to manifest. You know what I mean? I think you've been trying to manifest it, but you never expected it to come in. And now it's here. Yeah. The full card. It's like, now it's here. And you're like, oh shit what do I do? <laughs> you know, it's like some of you are like not sure how to, what to do with this energy. It's just kind of intense. Yeah, some of you, it's like you might, there might be a heartbreak. There might be some kind of, there might be like a karmic person that you've been holding on to that you need to let go of. Three of swords, 10 of wands, you know, someone that broke your heart. Maybe you have to break someone's heart, even possibly for some you know, some of you are in stagnant relationships where you're like, I know that my real per person, my real soulmate or twin flame is out there. I don't know if I want to hold on to this heartbreak anymore. You know, some of you are like staying with someone because it's comfortable or like you're in like a relationship and it's like this person doesn't appreciate you or they don't. It's like there's just something missing there and you can feel that like they don't appreciate you. They don't understand you. It's like you feel alone and your spirit guides are kind of asking you to let go of that burden, you know. You might have to break their heart or they might even, it might, you might be heartbroken yourself as well, but this could be a karmic connection that's come to a close. It's like you feel like you want somebody else or something else. Like you keep feeling like there's just something missing and you're trying to convince yourself that, you know, this should be enough. Like everybody wants this. Like, you know, I'm, I'm married to a great person or I have a great relationship. Like, you know, yeah, everything's not perfect. There's some things that can change, but you know, like, yeah, he, he or she yells and belittles me sometimes and they don't accept that I'm a witch and they don't, 
um, you know, they don't fully understand me or they, they drink too much or they do this or that. Um, but you know, we'll figure it out. It's like, you're kind of sweeping things. You've been sweeping things under the rug for some of you with someone and take it as it resonates. This could be a, this could be like a parent or a family member or a friend. This could also be, this could also be your own unwillingness to deal with heartbreak and to do the shadow work. And now your spirit guides are asking you to really be honest with yourself and do the shadow work. For others, this is like a, like I said, like a romantic karmic connection here where someone might have to get heartbroken, where it's like you might have to really be honest with yourself that there is something missing here, that you do feel like there's someone that's, that's um, going to accept you and love you for who you are and the way that this person just did not. You know, a ten of wands, it's letting go of that burden and letting go of that heartbreak and looking towards the future, being strong. Yeah, loyalty, integrity. You guys need to have integrity, honesty. You know, because it might be lonely. It might be hard. And this might not be an easy choice. This could be like a situation like a, I'm getting for a couple of you. It's like you live with this person. It's like a karmic connection that you're in. And you're like, I know I need to make this change, but... Like, where am I going to live? Where are they going to live? Like, what's going to happen? Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's all these fears and it's kind of like, you know what? Follow your heart. Follow your intuition. Go forward. You know, time to make this choice. Seven of Cups. Time to make a choice. Time to really stop sweeping this under the rug and make this decision. And like I said, for all of you, this isn't all, for all of you, this isn't a person. For some, this is just you doing the shadow work and you really making, it could be another important decision that you need to make. It could just be you doing the shadow work that, um... You know, you really, really getting honest with yourself about the path you've been on and about what you need to do to change that path, you know, going out and living your best life. I just see people like stepping out of their comfort zone here is coming, you know, yeah, it's like hitting rock bottom, but then... For some, there's a, there's a message that needs to be had here. This isn't for everybody, but for some, there needs to be some clear, direct communication. And it might be rock bottom for someone. It might be painful, but, you know, someone might go into hermit mode here. Hmm, Empress. But they're going to be intuitive while they're in that hermit mode. Three of Wands. And it's like someone needs to have this, this conversation. There could be a conversation coming in that... It's like someone needs closure from you or you need closure from someone else. Queen of Wands. Page of Wands reverse the wheel. Yeah, I just feel like this could be like a karmic cycle ending. And, you know, take this if it resonates. If this is like your true love and you're just in separation... And you're waiting for that person to come back around. That's totally different. You know what I mean? Like That's different than a karmic connection. You know what I mean? Like if you have like a soulmate or a twin flame and you're waiting for them to come around and, you know, you, you can feel that that's, that's happening, you know, because there was like a divine couple here for a lot of you. There is like a divine couple, like a soulmate, twin flame couple. So what I'm getting here is that either, I mean, there's a few different stories. For some, it's like this could be that you need to cut out like an ex or like a toxic family member, or like I said, this could even be like your own toxic patterns or your own, just whatever, whatever's blocked you, whatever's kept you from being the free spirited, emotional, passionate person you used to be, you know, it's like revisiting your empathetic side, reclaiming that passion, but this time doing it differently so that you don't lose yourself in toxic situations again. So basically you're, you're going to be an empath, but you're going to be balancing the empathy with like the king or queen of swords energy so you're going to be an empath but you're going to be a strong powerful empath you're going to be the kind of empath that knows how to set boundaries knows how to tell people to f off you know knows how to you know do what they need to do to protect themselves and live their best life you know it's not selfish to put yourself first you know it's not selfish to to do what's right for you you know, you need to do what's right for yourself. So it's like, yeah, someone's revisiting that empathy. So anyway, like, what, like I was saying, I mean, it's a beautiful reading because it's all about stepping out of your comfort zone, reclaiming your passionate side, being the person you really are on a soul level, being that like fairy spirit that just, you know, dressing how you want to dress, you know, traveling the world if you want to travel the world, just doing the things that you want to do, just, you know, seizing the moment. It's, it's a really beautiful energy here. It's really life-changing energy, like a spiritual breakthrough kind of energy is what I'm getting here for you and for your true love. 
Now, for some, you and your true love are simultaneously going through this, even if you're not in contact. Both of you are letting go of toxic people and toxic situations, and you're mirroring each other, and you're telepathically communicating with each other. And, um, and you can feel that, like you can feel that you're telepathically communicating and maybe having dreams about each other and you're kind of helping each other through this, even if you're not physically in contact right now. Um, and, but so, so that's why I just want to say, like, don't let go of someone that is right for you. You know what I mean? Like take it as it resonates. Don't go against your own intuition just because of something I said, because there's different stories here. So you got to use your own intuition to kind of figure out which is which, you know what I mean? Don't don't if you're dating someone and they're actually really positive for you but you're like your fears are coming up like don't sabotage it just out of fear you know if, if it's your intuition then yeah go ahead and, and end that but you know some of you are dating someone new and you're like kind of scared because you're not used to that energy like you know and it's, it's like don't sabotage it don't be like oh I knew I knew he was up to something or I knew she was up to something you know what I mean like make sure it's your own intuition first like make sure you're, you're trusting your own intuition but um but yeah, like I was saying, it's like for some, you know, you're telepathically communicating with your person. You guys are both going through a psychic awakening. Whether it's your first or your second or third, you know, basically like a like an up like a leveling up is kind of the kind of energy I'm getting. And your person is researching you. Like they're researching the twin flame connection. They might be watching you. They're researching, you know, all the things that you told them about, all the psychic, you know, as far as witchcraft, psychic work, whatever it was you told them, they're really taking it more seriously now and their mind is opening up and they can't deny what they're experiencing and seeing and feeling. So it's a really beautiful energy. Um, and in that case, it's like you guys are mirroring each other and you're both letting go of toxic people at the same time and you're both moving forward together, you know, telepathically, you're both supporting each other. But for others, I feel like maybe you're living with someone that's a karmic and it's telling you to cut this person out so that you can find this other person that's right for you. You know, because there could be someone that you're telepathically communicating with that's pushing you to make some major life changes so you can go out in the world and find them. Like some of you might be, for example, feeling drawn to travel and your person lives in another state and you're going to go to another state while you're traveling and you're going to meet them. And so even though you haven't physically met this person yet... I feel like maybe telepathically you're, um, they're in your energy field, like, like in the astral realm, like, you know, telepathically, you guys are connecting. They're in your energy field, even if they haven't physically come in yet, like you can feel that energy. You can feel you're about to meet someone. So some of the, some of them are, they might not be conscious of it themselves either, but some of them, like their spirit is there with you saying, yes, I'm in Vermont or I'm in this state or this state, you know, um, you know, your your spirit guides are trying to lead you to travel or to move to a new location or do something new that you normally wouldn't do. They're pushing you to step out of your comfort zone. And you're like, but my nine to five job. And they're like, no, there's more for you. You're meant to do more than this boring office desk job. Like you're meant to have more than this. Um, so it's like you might not have met this person yet, but they're telepathically com communicating with you and pushing you as well as your spirit guides are also pushing you to to go out and find them and meet them and, and live your best life, you know, let this love flow to you because some of you just work and you don't really go out. So you don't really put yourself in a position to meet new people, you know, but take it as it resonates, you know, don't go traveling. You know what I mean? Like, like, you'll know if that's your story. If you've been wanting to travel, if you've been feeling that pull, you know, it could be your spirit guide saying, hey, like, it's time for new energy. It's time to just reclaim that passionate free spirit inside of yourself. You know, it's time to move forward now to um to those things. And for some, like I said, this might... It reminds me of that movie Eat, Pray, Love. Did you guys ever see that movie with Julia Roberts? I know it's based on a book, but it reminds me of that energy where she's... Like, she's married to this man and she's completely miserable. Like, she's just... It's like a very dead-end relationship. Like, they're not in love with each other. They're... Um, he doesn't understand her. Like, she just feels alone all the time. And she ends up getting a divorce and she, she goes and travels the world. And then when she travels to another country, she finds her, her soulmate, her true love, and they end up together. That's the, per that's the man that she ends up with. And, you know, that happened because she took this leap of faith. She committed to, she, com she stopped caring so much about what everybody thought. She stopped letting people pull her down. She stopped, um, 
you know, he or she stopped getting stuck in that energy. They they said, you know what, I'm leaving. I'm, I know it's going to break your heart. I know it's going to be hard, but I don't want to be in a dead-end relationship. I don't want to be in a relationship where I'm not appreciated and loved. You know, it's almost like a, just like a marriage where it's like you guys have tried everything, but you guys are just still, it's just still not working. Like it's still like there's still like an emptiness there. There's still like you just, it's like you just go to sleep and dream that there's something better out there for you. You know, and so if you're feeling drawn to go to a certain location to travel, go do that. You know, there might be someone waiting there for you. Um, or it might just be, it might maybe not even a person. Maybe it's just like an experience that you need to have. Maybe it's just, you know, just new energy. Maybe it's just you're going to have epiphanies when you're traveling because you're going to be in a new environment. Um, so take it as it resonates, but there's this general energy of, you know, destiny, true love, going towards what really makes you happy, putting yourself first and choosing your passion. So I hope that makes sense. Um, like I said, email me if you want a private reading. My email is below. Thanks for watching.